Could what we are seeing today across this country and around the world actually be what we have been praying for the last 30 years? We have to be careful to criticize the thing that we've been praying for, especially when it happens differently um, than maybe we thought it might. I mean, read the book of Acts and the rest of scripture. When God moves, the response is normally pretty radical. I wanna give you 10 principles of revival that I've learned over the years. Uh, hopefully, I can get through this. You can imagine the um, excitement and yet the emotion to finally see a revival and awakening on this scale in our lifetime. The millennials and Gen Z have never seen this in their lifetimes. This is something that many of us have been praying for for three decades. Just go back and visit our blog and see the dozens of times that we have talked about this. Uh, uh, iTunes, YouTube channel. We've talked about these kind of things and thanks now to social media and the information age, we might be seeing a viral assist to the work of God. Let me give you some quick theology behind revivals and awakenings. Acts chapter three, really the whole chapter, but 17 to 26 may be the most thorough text in the scriptures on revival and awakenings. Luke gives us a prescription for theology and practice of revival in this powerful chapter. And it's interesting that this text on repentance and forgiveness of sins and revival would be linked together. What is even more impacting is that a supernatural miracle took place at Solomon's Colonnade right before this text I'm going to read to you. I believe there are many precursors to revival and awakenings, but this text certainly suggests that repentance and the supernatural are instrumental to revival. Of course, we know that there are many other elements that lead to revivals and awakenings, right? I mean, look at this text in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 through 16, where we have this iconic text of how God is moved by the prayers, fasting, repentance, and the seeking of his face by his people. And then God chooses to inhabit that place. In all actuality, looking at the scriptures and the history of revival, there are pretty clear prescriptions. Those prerequisites are just not easy, though, because they go against our human nature. Clear, but not easy. So here are 10 principles of revival taken from years of studying and praying for and visiting smaller renewals and awakenings around our country and writing on this topic. Number one, revival begins with repentance. Repentance is found in the scriptures and in the history of revivals. Just read Psalm 51. Number two, revival is sustained by obedience. Obedience to the Holy Spirit becomes a lifestyle and not an event. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead then will quicken your mortal body, give life to your bodies by the spirit who lives within you. And that will allow us to live according to the Spirit and not the flesh. That is ultimate revival. Romans chapter 8. Number three, revival is more about people and not merely places. People are the most important building that God occupies. What a lesson, right? For onlookers in this society, we need to learn this. That we do not go to church, we are the church. That we do not go to revivals, we must live one. Acts chapter 7. Uh, number four, revival is as a destination becomes a monument or a museum. Hear me, as quickly as we can, we must move from ground zero and ask God for as many personal movements as we can from this moment. Luke 7 and the book of Acts talk about the, 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 that viral movement. Number five, revival is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's role since 
Jesus sent him 2,000 years ago is to bring power and life to God's people. Look at John 14 through 16 and Acts chapter 1. Number six, revival is the message of Jesus. The message of Jesus is the centerpiece of revival. It is the gospel. Admit that you have sinned. Believe in your heart that he is the son of God and takes away the sin of the world and confess that he has risen from the dead. Acts chapter three, the ABCs of salvation. Admit, believe, and confess. Number seven, revival is the will of the Father. Maybe you've forgotten that. God the Father's will has always been to bring his creation to abundant life. And John chapter three is so clear that God's plan was reviving his creation through the work of the Holy Spirit and the message of Christ. This is what we're living. This is what revival and awakening is. Number eight, revival is born in the church. That's where the judgment begins. That's where the work begins. Revival begins in the church because the church becomes the foundational work of the Holy Spirit to move believers in apologetic mission. God has always had a plan for the church in mission. Second Chronicles 7, man, read through that chapter. Number nine, revival will ultimately then become an awakening in culture and society because the culture becomes the frontier work of the Holy Spirit as the church moves in mission. What a missiology of the church in Mark 16. The details, a description of what happens when a revival hits a, the believers and then an awakening comes to a region. Read Mark 16, so powerful. Number 10, listen, revival brings spiritual formation and discipleship. Without it, the outcome of revival, it must be discipleship, okay? Listen, our prayer is that you will host a move the Holy Spirit right where you are. We have to move as quickly as we can from ground zero, right? To every neighborhood and community in America. Look at the archives. Look at the response of, of revivals through the years and look at the president. Look at the president at Osbury, um, Asbury University as he challenges us. He says this, I'm quoting, We look to other schools, churches, and ministry communities as co-commissioners in this movement that, are, that is taking shape here. You do something there. In your community, listen, it's happening in Kentucky, Tennessee, Michigan, Minnesota, Texas, Ohio, Colorado, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York City, to name a few. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Take a look at the socials. See these principles in the manuscript to this resource. If you just hit the link tree in our socials, it'll take you to the website to our where you can get this manuscript mythology.com. You can also visit iTunes and YouTube for all of our resources. Hey, God bless you. We're praying for a move of God right where you are.